It's cold out, friends, but I'm bringing you to milk the cow because I'm gonna show you guys how to hand milk. Um, I show you guys milking all the time, but we're gonna get nitty gritty how to hand milk a cow. So it starts with your buckets. I have two buckets here because I'm milking two cows. If you're milking a kicky cow, it's a good idea to have two buckets too so you can milk and dump into another bucket so if she kicks, you don't lose all the milk. Ideally, you have a bucket with a lid. So while you're feeding or doing other chores, hay, dust, dirt, cats, chickens, don't get into your bucket. Ideally, this would be a stainless steel bucket with a lid, but that's not a possibility here. I'm yet to find one that's even a big enough capacity. So this is called a graduated mixing bucket from mixing pail from Uline, and I love it because it has the measurements on it so I can tell how much milk I'm getting. The lid is called an easy peel lid and it's nice and easy to get off and on. This is just a, th I think it's considered a four gallon stainless bucket, but it really only fits three and a half gallons. Let's find the cows first. I always climb up here, there's a bit of a, and look over, yeah, and I can see them out there. Hey cows, milk time! Go boss! Milk time! Milk time! Where's Clover? Hmm, cows. Here's one cow. Come on, Jessa! Milk time! We keep our beef cows and our milk cows separate, and one of the reasons there is that um, they're fed separately, but also our beef cows have like 15 to 20 acres. If I had to hunt down milk cows on 15 to 20 acres every day, I would lose my mind. So for me, it works best to have the milk cows in smaller pastures, closer in, so that we're not having to chase them down all the time. I always joke that when they come in, they have to drink a half a bathtub of water first because they've often been out grazing. And then they're like, all oh, right, I'm thirsty. So first step, drink a half a bathtub of water. Our milking setup is fairly fancy these days, although, so Freya looked at our barn after Mary's finished it with the siding and she was like, this is what rich people's barns look like. And I was like, I'm so glad you think that this is a nice prosperous barn, Freya. Your mind's gonna be blown one day when you see someone's fancy barn and not just, you know, tin siding on an old shed. But hey, you know what? It works great for us. So we have a gate panel here for easy in and out. This is called a head locker. And you can make one of these with uh, two by fours or you can find one in an old dairy. This rusted panel is actually cut off of an old squeeze that didn't work anymore. Mary's cut it apart to have two panels. This, with it like this, helps it so that they don't move around as much. They, you know, they know there's a wall there and they kind of stand more still. I did that when we had a cow who was being kind of fidgety. So then, this is actually going to be getting rearranged pretty soon, but this is contained with panels and then that's contained with panels. Um, that plywood box is their water. Come on in, Clover Dover. I know I was right in your way. You don't have to have a head locker, but honestly, I feel it's um, easier than tying them because they can't go back and forth so much. Guess I should close you in here, cow. So, you can use a bucket of warm soapy water. You can use baby wipes. We have specific dairy wipes because I was given them by a friend from her dairy that they weren't using them anymore. They don't have a dairy anymore. But honestly, I don't like them very much. I'm using them because I have them, but I would not, not recommend these. We always start with a quick brush to get any loose hair, dirt, or straw, especially like right on their belly and their udder in between because their udder is not a bag. There's like a center line. Oh, 
center ligament or whatever you want to call it. So this is just a good way, especially if they got stuff on their tail. You're not trying to make them perfect. You're just trying to grab anything that might fling off if they move while you're milking and compromise your clean milk. So it's not a perfect brush. It's just a quick brush. Next step is the wipes that I accidentally pulled out a whole pile of in the process of doing this. So, most ridiculous things ever. I used two because they're not thick enough. So Clover likes to move her foot when I wash and strip her. So I always hold my hand here. I'm letting her know this is my space. So you can move your leg, but you know, this is my space. So she's actually really clean. Marius keeps their bedding really clean in here. So I wash each teat so there's no visible dirt. Um, sometimes this takes multiple washcloths or multiple wet wipes. And then I look at the end of the teat too and make sure, cause often there's a little bit stuck on there. I wipe down the center line too to make sure that there's nothing hanging around in there. I wipe the back to make sure there's nothing hidden back there. And then I grab a clean one. Again, these are two doubled over. There's nothing visible dirty anymore. And I'm gonna give it a quick wipe to make sure it's nice and good and clean before I milk. This next step, um, I always do. It's not like a matter of life or death, but I think it's good practice. And that's that you strip three squirts out of each teat. And this has two purposes. Number one, the highest bacteria count milk is those first squirts. And number two, we can tell right away on these dark floors if there's anything. Um, if there's anything in the milk, any imperfections, any clots, goobers, etc. I know, the cat wants that milk. <laughs> so I usually actually strip into a little feed dish. Um, and it's black so it gives the same purpose, but this way the cats get some. And I strip a bit more for the cats because, because I can. You just be patient, kitty. If you wanted to test the milk for something, but you don't have a dark floor, you can use your boot, because most boots are dark. So you can strip onto your boot, and you can see the milk, and it looks nice, clean milk. So, time for us to milk. Now, there's, mu there's multiple methods to milking, and I'm gonna show you some different ways you can milk. Basically, the premise is the same on every one. You're cutting off the milk supply from going back up the udder, and you're squeezing it out. So, Clover's got nice big teats that I can do my whole hand. I'm gonna show you on my small teated Jessa as well. So like this, as they get emptier, you do what's called stripping. It would be very hard on your hands and take you way longer if you were to strip out the whole cow. But that's how you get the last of the milk out. But for this, we're just stripping. However, there's one more method that I can only do with my right hand. And that is, and that's this, that I stick my thumb in so the reason I would do this there's kind of two reasons number one it's just to give my hands a little different motion so that if they need a break the second reason is that if I'm um, it's cold out my nose is a little drippy if 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 the quarter is starting to run out and 
I don't want to strip just yet. I'll move to having my thumb in there and it will help me effectively get the milk out. So when I strip from milking, when I switch from milking to stripping is when I can no longer milk at a fast pace. The milk is just not recovering to the teat fast enough. Like the supply is not recovering fast enough. Um, and uh, because it's one udder that has four quarters. Each teat has its own quarter and produces a different amount of milk. So, um, yeah, every teat produces a different amount of milk. Isn't that wild? There's lots of opinions on how you should sit while you milk. Um, personally, I have a few approaches. One is a squat. Jessa just undid the chain on the dividing gate with her tongue. So, so squatting like this means that I'm close and my back is straight. Sometimes I'll switch and I'll put a knee down. I usually would go like this, my right knee down. And uh, that's comfortable. I do have a stool. I just don't love it because it puts me way higher. And then my arms have to reach farther. If you're gonna do a stool, you gotta be sitting on it and you gotta be right up against the cow. So this front one um, here, when I milk it, not much comes out. It's done. So that's when I move to stripping. And when I milk and I can only get one squirt before I get spits, that quarter is done. That's how we know when they're done. Now to do it to all the rest of the quarters. <laughs> actually going to dump the milk into my bucket the sound sometimes moves funny in the metal siding and uh, spooks the cows it's a new thing they're getting used to This may sound funny, but I have my strategy worked down on how to milk clover the fastest. So I milk this side until the front one basically runs out, but there's still a lot on the back. And then I milk this side until the back one basically runs out and is ready to be stripped, but there's still milk on the front. Then I do the back on this side and the front on this side because they're higher producing quarters. And I milk them until it's just to, until it's at the point where I'd be stripping and then I go around and I strip them all out. Stripping is important because it gets the last bit of the milk out. You don't need to strip forever and you don't need to strip till you can't get another drop out. You just need to strip them till you can't get a good squirt out. There will always be more milk. Um, but it's about if you can only get one, two, two squirts before it gets just spits, then she's done. The very, so the first milk to come out is kind of like skim milk, um, for milk, like if you're breastfeeding. And the last milk to come out, like hind milk if you're breastfeeding, is the creamiest. So that's your motivation to strip your cow out as good as possible, because you're getting the creamiest milk. And I'll show you on Jessa because it's super obvious. You can tell the difference between the foremilk and the hind milk. And um, yeah, so this front one's pretty much done. There's still some on the back here, so I'm gonna... Calling it the stripping dance is probably the wrong thing to call it. 
But you're doing a dance and going, going around to the different teats and making sure they're all stripped out properly and... So as you can see this one here stripping, whereas this one I'm still milking. It's way easier on your hands to milk versus strip. So milk as much as you can before you go to stripping. And um, I know people, Mac, my oldest included, who can milk his way to the very end. He only, he can effectively milk a cow out without stripping. Like I'll go and check and strip and he won't have another drop left. He can completely milk her out without stripping. I probably could do that, but it's faster for me to strip at that point. So I do that because I'm looking to save time. And maybe it's just our different hand size and whatever. So see how those are just spit? Those are done. That front one, we had stripped out, but then we left it. So then we can get another few squirts because you can always get a few more squirts. It's actually 7 degrees Celsius right now, which is like 45 Fahrenheit. Um, it snowed a tiny bit this morning, nothing stuck. Um, down. Minus 8 Celsius is the low overnight, which is 12 degrees Fahrenheit. There's always one quarter, you're finishing out last. So to make stripping go faster, because I was teaching someone to strip cow recently, don't go to the very end, because if you go to the very end, your hand comes out and then it takes longer to do it. Go like three quarters of the way down and then go back up to the top. But I'd say this cow, we can only get one squirt before it spits. And honestly, that's even probably more than I usually strip her out. But there we go, she done. Since I'm finished clover here, I dumped the rest of the milk into the bucket with the lid. Looks like there is some foam, so we're probably just over three liters, three gallons, sorry, which in liters, you know, it's a good 12 liters, not quite three and a half, because I can see the foam kind of goes to here, which is around what we've been getting from her. She's on the way down because she's gonna be dried off in a month for milking. Now my bucket I milk with, I hang up here so that in the going in and out, a cat, like this cat, doesn't get it, doesn't get, you know, when I'm brushing them, I don't get hay or whatever in there. And you'll notice, I'm gonna also grab my phone so that they don't step on it. You'll notice we don't feed grain while milking. This is because we find they're better behaved if we don't. If a cow is trying to see how she's trying to get out of there, I won't let her out now. She has to be relaxed and calm. See, there she is, now I'll let her out. If they start pulling on it and you let them out, you're, re you're reinforcing bad behavior. So Clover <laughs> likes to take her time getting out. So I actually come and I walk at her neck and I push her around and that kind of turns her around to go out faster. Otherwise, homegirl could take 10 minutes to get out and, sorry cow, I don't feel like watching for 10 minutes. Are you gonna move, Jessa? No? You guys are just in the way today. Clover's not halter trained, but I can, you know, give her an idea of where I want her to go with the halter. Whereas Jessa is halter trained. Jessa, are you going to try and mount her? Are you in heat again, Jessa? Sh Jessa has cysts on her ovaries, which we're going to deal with next time we breed her because there's a medicine we give you give when they're in heat. No, you know where to go. You know where to go. And you get... This is why we have the halter, because then remind her where she's gonna go. Come on. How's the pig pen going? Now let's close this so Clover doesn't come back in. 
Now Jessa is a much quirkier cow to milk for many reasons. Number one reason being she only has three producing quarters. One was lost when she was a heifer because another heifer nursed on her and she got an infection and it killed that quarter. So it's still engorged like normal when she freshened, but then nothing ever came out. Her other quirk, oh, Snow White, get out of here, is the, <laughs> her main quirk is that she's still not very well trained. <laughs> so her teats are not that big. So we'll see, that's her bigger one. Her back one is even smaller back there. So Jessa had a calf, we calf shared with her for six months. We weaned that calf and then she ended up nursing two other calves for four months. And now we're a month or so into milking her again. So she's not, she's still being reminded what good milking behavior is. So we actually use what's called a kick bar. It's not mean, it hits a pressure point right in here in their hip that it makes it hard for them to kick. I find it also makes them a little bit off balance. So that is something to be aware of. But to our advantage is that it's harder for them to kick because they're a little off balance. So they feel like they have to uh, brace themselves. If you have a cow who's fussy, I definitely recommend a kick bar. It adjusts pretty easily. If you're putting it on for the first time, start on the big size and then make it smaller as you go um, because it's quite fitted when you put it on and you find you have to like give it a little oomph over top of their spine. So if you have a cow that you're doing it for the first time, that could really startle them. So do it bigger and then make it smaller. I don't usually put it on right away. I usually wait till she kicks once because sometimes I can get most of the way through milking before she kicks. Um, but we're just going to make this go calmer for today and just put it on. <laughs> She's also pretty clean, which is nice. It's always a little awkward when I plan to do milking videos and then I come out here and the cows are like ridiculously dirty. I'm like, oh, <laughs> so. With these dairy wipes, like as wet as they're supposed to be, they're still on the dry side. Sometimes I'll even like squirt a bit of the milk into the wipe to make the wipe a little wetter. Again, the first round of cleaning is to get all visible dirt. And if there's something on there, you're gonna like pick it with your finger even if needed. You want them to be visibly clean. So I don't clean her, it's called like a dead quarter or a blind quarter. I don't clean it, I just make sure there's nothing that's going to fall off into the milking bucket. So she is now visibly clean. And now I'm going to give a quick wipe. Season, even when they're visibly clean, the wipe still gets a little dirty. Okay, we're good. Okay, now time to strip her. Oh, I know, Kitty, you're so excited. The hardest part of milking a tiny color with the itty bitty titty too many. The hardest part about milking a cow like this is that when they're full too, it kind of swallows up the teat even more. So the trick here is that we're actually, it's harder if your fingers don't all move. So instead of like trying to milk like this, move your whole hand with it. You're just not using all the fingers. You're just holding some of the fingers back. And then the back one, let's see here. Let's try not to get kicked. This is why we have a kick bar on here. Um, I can only do two. As she gets emptier, her back produces twice as much milk as the, the fronts. So I'll show you my method to milking her in a second, but we can, oh yeah. Then you end up with milk on your hand. So we do just two fingers 
is all we get. Because if we do that third one, it presses it into my hand and I'm more likely to get milk in my hand. This is when you often end up stripping a cow more, who is, oh, well, I was sticking the, I was sticking the microphone into her belly. Good thing she's calm. This is, people end up stripping cows who are um, small teats, and that's one of the reasons it's so hard on your hands. And also milking without your pinky also doing that full movement um, is really hard on your hands. So when people have small teated cows, uh, they quite often end up going for a milking machine because it's so hard on your hands, it takes you longer, it's just more difficult than you could ever think. So if you really want to hand milk, buy your cow accordingly. Um, Jessa will still move her opposite leg, so I will dump the milk as we go. Jessa, we got as a heifer and we took a chance on her teats. They're not the worst they could be, but they're definitely not the best they could be. So I milk the back quarter with my left hand, and I milk the front quarters with my right hand. And in the time it takes me to milk both, I will still be milking the back one. It's, um, we teach people to milk. We have friends who milk for us. I'm gonna move my camera in case Jessa decides to swing her front foot backwards. And they find it a lot harder to learn to milk Jessa and to get a good technique than it is to milk Clover. The other thing I end up doing, which I feel like I have to show you from the other side here, is I end up going like this sometimes. Like this is how I normally milk. And I end up doing this just to change the movement for my hand to make it not so sore. And just, you know, change up how your muscles are moving. If you've just bought yourself a new cow, she's going to probably hold back milk for the first few days and it's super stressful and you're worried she's gonna get mastitis. Move that away from her foot again. <laughs> Um, but they, sh they, they tend to let down after two to three days. Um, and it's really stressful that waiting it out, but just keep milking them the best they can. And as long as they don't have a history of mastitis, she should be fine. Um, just keep milking them as best as you can and they will relax and let down for you. So you see I change my hands around a lot when I'm milking Jessa because it's just that my hands get sore milking her. It's harder to milk her than it is to milk a cow who produces more. And I'm close to a gallon here so I do know that this front one is going to run out soon and I'm going to swap over to the other one. And the back is also softened up enough that I can get more fingers on, which is nice. Makes it easier to milk because I can grab up the bag more and I can more effectively milk. The other thing I'd like to caution about with the kick bar is if you're milking in such a way that your head is against the cow, make sure your head is not right near the kick bar because, or you're like right out from it, because if they do suddenly try to move or try to kick with this leg, that kick bar will knock against your forehead and you'll have an embarrassing bruise on your forehead. Not that I would know anything about this. Stripping is the same, I just find it takes a little longer. One thing to be careful of if you're kneeling, see all the stuff on my butt, knee now, because I'm kneeling on the dirty ground. I just make sure my knee doesn't go anywhere near the bucket. Stripping takes longer on a small feeded cow, in my opinion. So it takes me just as long to milk her as it does to milk a cow with four teats that produces more milk. What are you even doing, cow? Leaning forward like that. I'm just about done. 
She gave a good two gallons of milk. We'll see when we get inside. I don't think this is all gonna fit in my bucket. My bucket only fits just shy of five gallons. Clover gave over three and I think Jessa gave over two, so I'm not even gonna try and put this stuff in the bucket. I may, may, may. Thinking of making this straight into cheese, but I got too many other things to do. I don't think I can make cheese tonight. I have cabbages and kale and leeks and potatoes all waiting for me inside. Not just like a little basket or a box or something like significant amounts. Dinner's in the oven though. I just called Mac. I put the pan of dinner in the oven. Super nice, friend came for coffee this morning, she brought us dinner, how nice, right? Um, she brought us boudicol, which is potatoes with kale with sausages on top. So she brought us boudicol, so I put it in the oven before I came out to milk, and then I called Mac a bit ago, cause it's like 5.30 right now. I was like, hey, could you just turn the oven on? Dinner's in the oven already. So there we go, I'm gonna be a few more minutes out here, and then I'm gonna go inside, deal with milk, wash up, etc. I gotta feed the milk cows grain. We're grain finishing our beef cows we just started this week, so I feed them grain when I feed them grain. Sorry, I feed the beefers when I feed the milkers. The milkers get a dairy ration. I'm gonna talk about feed a different day. Um, whereas our beefers are just getting finished on barley. So, Jessa was very well behaved for you. That's why I love the kick bar so much. And uh, let's go deal with all this milk. 